Hello everyone. It's nice to meet you again. Today I have an interesting method video of which I would like us to look at and I believe we are going to learn a lot. So today we'll be looking at how to approximate the dominant agent value with each corresponding agent vector by the power method. And this power method is an iterative technique. And I want to wish every mathematician and everyone who aspired to be a mathematician a happy Pi Day. Yesterday was our Pi Day celebration, which was really awesome. So let's look at this clip. So the whole idea of uh, Pi method is to help us to get the dominant value, agent value, uh, with its corresponding agent vector from a given matrix. When our matrix becomes so relatively large, it's it's naturally just difficult to find to use to solve everything by hand using the characteristics polynomial approach so we use this parameter to help us to get the dominant agent value with its corresponding agent vector so before we dive before we solve this problem so let's let's look at a simple thing we first of all want to understand something from the characteristics word equation so given this matrix that we have here, we can obtain our characteristics. We have this one to be a, the, far, the row of A to be our characteristics for polynomium. And our lambda 1, which is equal to 3, lambda 2, I equal to I, and lambda 3 equal to negative I are the roots of the characteristics for polynomial, or which we, in terms we can consider to be the, the agent one values so we have seen three to be the dominant word agent value from the problem that we have seen here so from what i was saying previously was when we have a matrix which the size is relatively large of n by n maybe 10 or thousand by thousands to use this characteristics word equation or polynomial approach we are going to get a, a, we are going to get an equation a polynomial with a degree of n which is just difficult to find the agent value of this problem of of this equation so the parameter comes in to help us get the dominant agent values which is believes it contains a lot of information about the matrix so let's now solve the problem using the power method so like it's already established this uh, an iterative word technique so it being an iterative technique we have our matrix a and our initial guess which is our x naught we multiply to get this work column vector we pick we in order to perform the scaling we consider the dominant value here which is five and we use it to normalize which give rise to equation two and then this column vector that's 0 0.60 0 0.20 and 1.11 so having obtained our x1 we then go a step further to find our x2 so to find our x2 we have our matrix a and our x1 that we have already subbed which is this one here we multiply to get this column vector we also consider picking the maximum value here we use it to normalize and this maximum value that we have seen is the approximate agent value and then after performing the scaling this is our approximate agent word vector for the given approximate agent word value so we then go ahead to keep to do our third iteration we do the same thing our x and our x our matrix a and our x2 to give us this very vector that we have seen here we perform the scaling and gives rise to equation six we go a step further to do our fourth iteration and then we perform the scaling which give rise to equation eight so we go a step further to do the our fifth iteration and with our fifth iteration <coughs> we were able to get and with the scaling as well we we're able to get what equation 10 so the question is when are we going to stop so let's get us some let's understand some few things here so from here
from here we have our x5 from from x5 we we have we do the uh, multiplication again which give rise to equation 11 and we perform the scaling uh, scaling uh, which also give rise to equation 3 so we can see from here with our norm with with our normal eyes we can see that okay looking at this very vector that we have here when we consider which were our x6 when you consider our x5 here it's almost the same so when we should continue to do our multiplication over and over and over again we will be getting something close to something close to this one here or when we do the scaling we'll still be getting back our <coughs> this very matrix this very vector that we have here so from here we can say okay our adding values up for, uh, converges were for three as we have seen it from the characteristics what equation are them so there is another way that, that we can also use to check if the our if our adding value the one that we have obtained the approximate value is the actual adding values which we can fall on the Rayleigh quotient so Rayleigh quotient said if our x is the is the actual adding vector of is an adding vector of a matrix a then and its then its corresponding adding value can be obtained in terms of this switch we know this one can be expressed in terms of as we have seen here so to prove it we know our a of x can be expressed in terms of this and then if we are able to express it in terms of this we then go ahead and then from here equation 3 13 we then get equation 14 of which the numerator and the denominator just cancel out and then we are left with our lambda so this one has brought us to the end of this lesson and i believe this thing this clip has been of great help please don't forget to like comment and subscribe please help subscribe and and, and share this video with friends and loved ones it's, it's really simple thank you for watching